I'm Lori Meggs and welcome to a special edition of Focus on Marshall. We're here at the Kennedy Space Center, Florida, where we're focusing on the Space Shuttle main engines. And joining me now is Space Shuttle main engine project manager Jerry Cook. And Jerry, we have a shuttle on the launch pad ready to go, but let's remind folks what it takes to get those main engines ready for launch. Okay, Lori, uh, you're right. This is a culmination of, of weeks and months of effort that, to turn the shuttle around. The SSMEs are part of the shuttle propulsion elements managed by Marshall. Once the solid rocket boosters separate, the three main engines provide the ascent thrust to get the vehicle up on orbit. And Jerry, a lot of power and a lot of hard work that goes into this for 520 seconds. Let's talk about the workforce here that gets these things ready. Well, the workforce is outstanding and it's made up of the people both here at the Kennedy Space Center, the people back at Marshall. Uh, the, the engines themselves are manufactured by Pratt Whitney Rocketdyne. They're located in Canoga Park in California. And the, the high pressure pumps are manufactured down in West Palm Beach, just a couple hours south of here. So it's an amount, an enormous amount of effort goes into every mission, not only pre-launch, but also during the launch to maintain uh, the telemetry data that we need, as well as the post-launch operations. All right, I think we're going to see some of the operations here at KSC. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. I'm here in the engine shop at KSC, and joining me now is Paul Bresky. He is a launch support engineer with Pratt & Whitney Rocketdyne. And Paul, we are standing in front of the main engines that will be installed on Atlantis and launching STS-132 shortly. Tell us about what happens here in the engine okay. shop. Once an engine, or all three engines, return from their previous mission, they go through a horizontal and vertical processing that takes about eight to 10 weeks. We have a, this processing area here, and we also have over to our right the high bay where they get hardware replacements if required and special inspections. What's interesting about these engines, and especially, is this is the nozzle thrust chamber, and there's 1,080 individual tubes that the hydrogen flows down through and cools the engine to protect it from the combustion byproducts. And most people don't realize that we use the hydrogen not only as fuel, but as a coolant for the whole engine. Paul, the main engines have been one of the most stable components of the shuttle propulsion system. How many engines have we flown and are we still flying the same engines today? Uh, since STS-1, we have flown 46 different engines. However, we have constantly upgraded them and since STS-105, we are now flying the Block 2 engine with an upgraded powerhead, advanced turbo machinery manufactured in West Palm Beach, and a new advanced health monitoring controller, the main computer for the engine. And why do we need these upgrades? Well, primarily for safety and reliability. Especially the new engines have a larger throat in the main combustion chamber, which lowers the temperature and pressures of the engines during operations while not changing the performance at all. And I know you guys are proud of this little statistic I see on the wall there, over a million seconds of power and counting? Yes, in our entire test and flight programs, we have over a million seconds and counting. And if you took that as three engines per flight, that's over 700 space shuttle missions of operation. So a lot of work has lot gone work. into this engine shop. Oh, definitely. And this, this engine shop is new, relatively speaking. They used to have an engine shop in the vehicle assembly building, and this is a major upgrade to those facilities. All right, well, thanks for showing us around, Paul. Oh, thank you. I'm here with Sharon Fagan, and she is in launch operations with the Marshall Resident Office here at Kennedy Space Center. And Sharon, it's very exciting to be standing outside an orbiter processing facility. Tell us what happens here. Well, currently they're working on the Atlantis orbiter, getting it ready to be launched for the STS-132 mission. So all the different KSC folks are doing the different jobs that they have to do to get the orbiter ready prior to launch. And we're talking specifically about main engines for us. Tell us what happens to the main engines in this facility. It's in this facility that they both install the main engines and remove them after it lands at K after the orbiter lands at Kennedy Space Center. And they do that in a specific order. They always start with engine one, which is at the top, and then they move on to engine three and then engine two for each of the missions. They remove them in the opposite order. They remove them again back in the opposite order. It's very confusing. I'm always thinking of three, two, one, but it doesn't go that way here. Tell us why it's done in that order. Well, they want the reason the top one's put in first is, of course, you don't want to disturb the ones that are below it as you're putting in the first engine. And then they do three next because they don't have to rearrange their equipment to put in three. When they get to two, it's, it's clocked 90 degrees, so they have to move their equipment around before they can install that last engine. So Sharon, how long does this operation take in the OPF? It takes one shift per engine, and it takes around 10 to 12 people to do that work. Um, the, the person that's actually at the top doing the work is called the MOO director and that's actually one of the highest certifications that you have to hold at Kennedy Space Center because it's such a precise operation and it takes a lot of skills and experience to do that. Thanks Sharon. 
I'm here now with Mike Cosgrove and he is the flow manager for the main engines and Mike we've seen what happens in the OPF we've seen what happens in the engine shop but there's a lot more work to do right tell us what happens from there yes there is once the uh, vehicle rolls out of the OPF with the engines installed we're on our way to the VAB and then we're going to the VAB the vehicle is rotated vertical and lifted into position and mated with the the uh, booster stack and then uh, we uh, do a few walk downs and a couple of leak checks to finish off our our integrated portion in the VAB. The vehicle is then rolled out to the launch pad and we're getting set for a, a real launch mission there. And there's a lot of testing that goes on even out of the pad too, right, with the engines? Absolutely. Once we get to the pad, the first thing we do after the vehicle powers up is we uh, power up the controllers and we go through a uh, uh, flight readiness test with the hydraulics and pneumatics on the engine to make sure we're still ready to go after we're integrated with the vehicle and the pad. And it's not just, I know you're in the LCC here, the Launch Control Center, but you guys are monitoring it all over the country, right? Even in Huntsville? Absolutely. Huntsville have the HOSC, and at Canoga Park we have the ROSC, and we're in constant communication. And then after, of course, we get closer to launch day, uh, we, get, we do a uh, aft compartment complete walk down, remove the GSC and the protective closures, close the aft up for flight. And then about a day and a half before launch, uh, we power up the controllers and do a, a sensor and a, and a uh, igniter checkout on the engines. And then uh, we're ready to support tanking. And then, of course, on launch day, uh, when tanking comes around about eight hours or so before the launch, uh, we're in the data room. We're also in the firing room monitoring. And we're actively talking to the HOSC and the ROSC and monitoring for any uh, real-time issues that come up that we can talk about. And then, of course, uh, as we count down, we're uh, always uh, thankful that we can watch a very, uh, what we call a boring countdown, uh, no events, and, and just uh, standing by and waiting. And then uh, if everything goes well for us, uh, we light up and we have a nice day. All right. Well, we can't wait to see it. I hope it's very boring for you. So all of the hard work and preparations culminate right here on a launch pad at Kennedy Space Center. The shuttle and the engines are ready to go. Find out where we turn up next as we focus on Marshall.